So this image comes from the Codex Maglia Beckiana. It's from the mid-16th century, which is the mid-1500s. It's the early Spanish colonial period. So it represents uh, an emerging of these kind of codices to make up for the fact that the Spanish were destroying most of them. So a lot of times it was a cooperation between the Spanish and the indigenous peoples document certain things. So it has a lot of different gods in it and such like that. But this is a depiction of human sacrifice in the Aztec society that comes up in this codex um and as you can see it's the rituals being partaken there's onlookers there's several people on the side who are going to be part of the ritual and uh there's a person up top who's having their heart removed and yeah so that's just a good example um next i think we're gonna look at um this guy yeah, so this is Tolata uh, Tecutli. He is also a, uh Aztec deity. Um, I've seen a lot of mentions of this as a female deity, but I've also seen several lectures with college professors saying this is actually a male deity, so that's a little bit up for question. But regardless, you see the four claws in each corner. This is actually a sacrificial altar, and the deity is giving birth. And I like this one because it really clearly kind of shows you, you know, people are being killed on this altar and yet the life-giving powers are being emanated from it through its symbology directly, the act of giving birth. This is um, a pile of skulls that they found um, underneath Mexico City, underneath Tenochtitlan. And you see these uh, found from time to time just demonstrating kind of the scale of some of the human sacrifice that occurred. Um, there was often a skull rack outside of the temple, and uh, this is just like a big wall of skulls, or perhaps a skull rack. So this comes from the mural at uh, San Bartolo. Um, it's in um, northern. It's in northern Guatemala. And it's northeast of Tikal, roughly 50 miles. And this is on the uh, the west mural at San Bartolo. And that right there is a, it's a king impersonating the hero Hunapu, piercing his penis with a spear to spill sacrificial blood. So it's a great example of bloodletting. Just, you know, um, he's got his head dressed, king. So anyways, this is another one from the same area. It's from northern Guatemala, and it, it if you see on the left, that's a gourd. And it's like a a, a kibosh, I believe. Um, I'm not exactly sure, a squash gourd. And there's blood spurting out of it, and there's little babies coming out of it. So you can see blood, renewal, uh, new life, and food all connected, and so even though there's no human sacrifice in this particular picture, I think it it gives light to gives light to the connection between blood and birth and renewal and the gods and all those things were intimately connected. So over here you see these people who are bowing to the maze god and on the right is the maze god who's giving them an offering but also accepting their offering. So even in that sense, you get the sense of uh, giving and receiving. So this is um, Shield Jaguar, who is a king of a Mayan city, and his wife or consort, a lady, uh, Shock, and she's piercing her tongue with a rope with obsidian blades, and that's another example of bloodletting. And you can see that it's in a revered position. So here you have... Um, a picture of this is from Chichen Itza. It's the ball game players, and it's from a an ancient Mayan site called Chichen Itza, right by the ball court. And as you can see in the middle, the ball has a skull depicted on it. And to the left of that, there's a man, and in his hand, he's holding a severed head, and he's wearing he has a knife. Um, He's wearing some sort of ceremonial outfit. He could be a ball player himself. 
Um, on the right, though, is the man who's just been sacrificed. Uh, could have been the winner or the loser, but as you can see, he's kneeling on his right knee. He's kneeling on one knee. It's to the right of the skull ball, and you can see there's snakes coming out of his neck. So those snakes represent the blood that the person is offering. And that blood personified as snakes is also important in their symbology because snakes represent the passage into the spiritual world and the travel of stars through the heavens. But regardless, coming out of these snakes, there's food. As you can see, if you keep looking past them, you'll see representations of food that are sprouting out of that. So there you have it. That's an example of the blood being offered as a, in getting in result of that as sustenance from the gods. So through these examples, we're able to see examples of how in the artwork, in the Aztec carving of the uh, earth god at the Temple Mayor, or as in this by the Chichen Itza ball court, or the skulls that were found below, or uh, any number of things, the image from the codex, we're able to see that all of these things um, were depictions of a way of life a way of life which uh, con uh, included the practice of blood being offered to the gods um, and a connection between one's soul, the gods, and what we do here on earth, including the ultimate sacrifice of sacrificing people in order to balance the universe. Um, perhaps, you know, to carry on the myths. It, it is implied that it was done so to continue... The world as we know it and to prosper so um there you have it so often the maya are referred to as the quiche people so the quiche people at one point or another had this god called tohil and tohil was a fire deity and he had other responsibilities but he was one of the primary ones that they would sacrifice to so that's what makes uh, him significant. But, yeah, I just think it's really interesting to think about, like, you know, what, you know, what makes sacrifice uh, similar to other things, you know? Like, is any gesture the same, or is it somehow just distinctly different altogether because of the taking of human life? Um, you know, what separates sacrifice from song or from dance or from whatever else that we do and you know like why do we do the things that we do um does sacrifice does it portray an almost uh admirable sense of the fact that the people really believe in the other the spiritual world and providing blood to it so therefore their lives are more sacredly connected to their beliefs than you know those of us perhaps who just exist in a realm which is completely separate from the other world or our belief system. Um, yeah, so what does it mean, you know? Uh, how did they look at it? We'll never really know perfectly, but I think that um, through it we're able to see a very interesting religion and uh, dare I say, maybe a bizarre world, but a, uh, a a very interesting one in which people offer blood to the gods. And uh, yeah, like I said, I think it's interesting to consider how that relates to other activities and what it really means and try to understand these people better. Thank you.